Hello and welcome back. So, this is my lovely HP 53132A frequency counter, which I've probably had about seven years. And uh, I intend today to swap the vacuum fluorescent display for an LED replacement. I mean, it isn't super dim. But I think it has got dimmer since I uh, bought this. Got it for a very good price on eBay. Nobody else bid except me. And it's also got the uh, channel 3 option, which often they don't have, which takes it up to uh, 3 gigahertz. Very nice. And uh, interestingly enough, as I, at the moment I'm displaying uh, the output for my GPSDO. So we can see that. I've got approximately uh, 8 millihertz of error between the internal oscillator and the GPSDO. But if we look at the digits, the left hand digit, where it's a 1, seems somewhat brighter than the rest of them. And I wonder if that one is not always lit up, and that's why it hasn't suffered uh, dimming so much. Now it isn't really that bad this display, but when it's up where it normally lives, a few feet from where I'm looking at it, it can be a bit hard to um, to see at times. So what I did was I bought, having watched Dave on EV, EEV Blog's channel, he was sent one for free, a replacement which the guy a guy in Florida makes. It's an LED replacement, which will mean that it hopefully will never need replacing again. So I thought I might as well buy one. And uh, I think it took not too long. In fact, it spent more time traveling around the US than it did once it got to this country. It was traveling around the US for about 10 days at least. But um, Dave on the EV blog, I got this for free, but I didn't, I bought one. So here it is. And it's bag. And uh, this is what it looks like. Could pull the back off. Maybe even need a bit more light. Okay. Looks a lovely board, lovely quality. Not only so, as I was saying, not only do you get this, but you also get. A lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork, which is really, really good um, service. Gives you step-by-step -step installation guides with colour photographs. So hopefully you can't go too wrong. Shows you where to connect the uh, power wires. What else does it have in there? Pieces of the boards. We connect the positive on the old display board once you've removed the vacuum fluorescent display. So really comprehensive instructions and guides. Shows you how to solder it and get it flat and all that. Not only do you get all that, you also get printouts from the HP service manual on how to take the counter apart and how to get the front panel off which Dave obviously didn't read when he did his because he was levering it off with a screwdriver to get these plastic tabs off well, you don't have to lever it off, you have to push the sides in. 
once you've undone a screw. But um, that's that. And then you get a bit more on how to take the uh, actual front off the take the board out off the from the front panel. And uh, all this stuff I've read anyway because I've got the service manual. Now it's flickering because I put that light on. Never mind. Um, so I think the next step is to take it apart. I'm in a bit of state of anxiety here because if I do something wrong, then I screw the whole thing up, haven't I? But um, I mean, I wonder if it was much point doing this video, as Dave's already done one, but at least you get a different accent doing a video than his. So there you go. So I'm going to take it all apart now, but I probably won't film that because it's fairly tedious. Okay, so I've um, taken the uh, cover off it and it just involves two screws at the back and another one just there. Simple to get into it and just so I'd give you a tour of the inside of it. Over on the left, that's uh, the crystal oven which I put in, did a video on that. That's an ultra high stability double crystal oven. Hence the fact that it has hardly drifted at all over quite a long time since I calibrated it. The other thing is this board here. That is the three gigahertz option board. So the next thing to do with it is move the camera. The next thing I've got to do is undo these B and C nuts, three of those, pull this off, the switch knob, and One screw there, I can do that. Torx, they're all Torx. I don't think I'm going to do much more today because it's quite cold in here. But I can do some more later in the week when it warms up. And then, rather than levering this off like Dave did, you have to um, loosen a screw. I'm not quite sure what that is at the moment, so I have to read the instructions again. And then you can bend the sides in to get the front panel off. So I'm going to leave it for now and a couple of days time I'll come back to it. So it's another day in the workshop and it's a bit warmer. So what I did yesterday following the instructions I managed to get the front panel loose and ready to take off and I've unplugged the ribbon cable from its socket and I can slide it out hopefully everything will come out fairly easily like that and there we have what I need to do next is get the board out so as you can, there's various plastic clips, three on the bottom and uh, 
two on the top. So as you can stretch the uh, panel to do that, but I don't think it's going to work like that. I think it needs more um, brute force than that. So I need to find the appropriate implement, which is a screwdriver. I think this will not be easy. I'm going to do this off camera. That actually was not terribly easy. I managed to loosen the two on the top, I think it is. And now, it's always difficult when you're working behind the camera. But there it is anyway, it's off. It's off. I thought I was going to damage something shoving a screwdriver in there, but I didn't. And uh, while I'm in here, I think it would be a good idea to pull the rubber buttons off. Although they look quite clean, I might give them a bit of a wash. <coughs> They're not too bad actually, but it's the best opportunity to clean them, isn't it? Anyway, next thing is to get, get the vacuum fluorescent display off, which involves bending these out of the way. also got a metal, I don't know what you call it, shield, that's got to come off and that is not used I believe with the new display. So once again I think that's going to be off camera, it's working around the camera is not easy. Um, I'm going to have to use this hideous thing up there my desoldering tool which is relegated to the highest part because it rarely gets used because it keeps blocking up and I wish I never bought it. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go and wash these rubber buttons and then desolder it, the old display. Well, that was an ordeal. Certainly wasn't as easy as uh, Dave on the EV blog made it look and uh, I suspect my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. I also suspect that bloody solder desoldering gun is hopeless. It kept blocking up and I ha I'm ashamed to have to say I actually had to resort to cutting some of the legs, most of the legs on the old display. So I ain't got much good for anything, is it? I was hoping to keep that, just in case. Well, you can still sew the wires onto it, but whatever. Anyway, I'm a bit of a nervous wreck after doing that. But the new one does go in there quite nicely. Ah, oh dear. I'm going to have to have a break and a drink. So, I've connected it with my power wires. You can see the red one goes under there, connects to a capacitor, which presumably has 5 volts on it. The next step is to solder diagonal pins, one at each side, so you can level it up before you solder all the pins. So I'm just going to solder one of these and the other one opposite. Difficult when you're doing it around the camera. I 
Okay. Bit of a perfectionist, so uh, need to measure it. So it's eight millimeter. Top of the board, just about roughly the same. And that's only seven. Okay, and that's six. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of fiddling around to get it right, and then I'll solder all the pins in. Right, well, all the soldering went fine. A lot easier than the uh, desoldering. We cleaned it up a bit. Maybe it could do with a bit more cleaning of the flux. But whatever. I don't really mind what it looks like, it's just as long as it works. So I plugged it back in the display cable that is and now I'm going to risk it I'm going to push the button uh, the front panel button is a soft button because it's always got power on the piece of on the actual unit so I'm not going to get a shock by touching the back of the board or anything so here we go and let's turn off the uh, light it's looking good I mean it doesn't look as good as it will let's plug a signal into it 10 megahertz of course it's way off at the moment because the oven's cold crystal oven but um, it's, bro it's blue I'll say that for it I don't think it's coming out as well on the camera as I can see it. Um, let's just stick this in front of it. It's flickering a hell of a lot on the camera as well, which it isn't to me. It looks blue, doesn't it? Well, I, I don't think it's a massively amount brighter than the uh, vacuum fluorescent was. But at least it's not going to get any dimmer, as it's LED. So, oh yeah, that stopped it flickering then. It's not going to get any dimmer, that's the main thing. I do quite like that blue, I must say. So there you go. I'm going to turn it off again. Reassembly time. So, it's all back together and working. And even that was fraught. With problems so I got the board back in display board back in power switch was sticking it was sort of off at a slight angle for some reason I don't know how that happened I was quite careful handling it but um, I had to pull the board out again and still not quite up to temperature so six millihertz off still at the moment but um, it's been on about half an hour. It takes a long time for the oven to warm up. I gotta say that's one of the most stressful things I've ever done. Try, trying to do something like that and not to screw it up. Um, but it's all working fine. Tested all the buttons, they all work. I'm now recovering with a glass of wine. Help me relax. I don't think it shows up particularly well in the camera how nice a blue that is but the more I see of it the more I like it and um, anyway if nothing else you got to hear a Gloucestershire accent rather than the Australian accent so I hope you got something out of my video I'm quite happy with the result, so thanks for watching. Bye for now.